Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication as well as how to build strong family bonds all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about how to show your child that you love them. In this video, we're going to be talking about love and attachment. We're going to talk about why your children question your love for them and then what you can do to instill more of that loving relationship that you're hoping for. So this whole channel is all about self-government. Learning self-government actually has to do a lot with the people around you and your relationships too, because when a person learns self-government, it's about having a change of heart. That means that you have decided that you ought to be a different version of yourself and you're making a change. For many people, they make those changes because they've recognized in the relationships or the people that they're surrounded with that there is a need for a change in order to improve relationships. So when we teach our children through parenting, one of the biggest teaching tools is actually the way that we feel with them. So our attachment, our bonding with them. In fact, that is the first basic need that any person has is to feel attached or bonded to their parents. So this is the very first most basic thing that we should be helping our child have. And that is actually that seed of love, feeling like they belong to you. Everyone needs a feeling of belonging. And so we want to focus there first. If you want your children to know how much you love them, then you need to always be helping them understand that they belong to you, that you accept them for who they are and how they are, and that you are there for them no matter what. I remember when I had a child who had some kind of bad body odor, and you know, there's these times where children will go through body odor phases. And I remember having to tell myself, I cannot choose to be disgusted by that. I can instruct them, help them learn good hygiene, but if they still have a moment where there's bad body odor, I need to be okay with that. I need to choose to accept them as a person that I love and accept that they will learn how to fix this body odor problem, especially with a little bit of tutoring and help and suggestions that are done in kindness, but that I will help them move in that direction. So my condition of heart directly related to that person's condition of heart. In fact, I was noticing this particular person was starting to feel a little bit like they weren't as connected. They, they didn't talk to other people as much. They started feeling a little bit more down on themselves. But as soon as I changed, my attitude about them being a work in progress, them you know, having body odor right now and that's okay, and not choosing to be offended by it or take things personally, suddenly their attachment to everyone around them changed. When I was a therapeutic treatment care parent for troubled teens, so I raised four children of my own that are my biologicals, and then I had multiple children who I did therapeutic treatment care for. These children came from diverse backgrounds, diverse religious, um, ethnicity, but also oftentimes situations of trauma, neglect, those types of things, and they would come into my home. And so sometimes they had some behaviors that were pretty difficult. In fact, some behaviors I didn't even know existed before they came into my home. And I had to decide ahead of time, no matter what I see, no matter what I experience, no matter what issue they have, I am here for them. I made that decision inside myself. And then you know what? They felt safe talking to me about the problems and making plans for how to fix things. Sure, sometimes they didn't like being held responsible or accountable for things that they would do, but they knew it was safe and it was okay because they could feel that I hadn't judged them. I hadn't compared their weakness to my strength or to somebody else's strength, but I took them where they were and then I helped them move forward. And that is so important. Sometimes we're really critical of our children and this actually can make it so that they start to pull away from us. So let's talk about why would a child ever question our love for them? Well, could it be that we have been so emotional 
in our relationships with our children that they think that when everything feels kind and calm that we love them, but when we're frustrated, stressed, angry, short-tempered that we don't, it's possible. People interpret emotions like that. And children who are immature, who do not have the ability to reason, they don't have the experience, the life experience to know why a person would be behaving the way that you are behaving, they might interpret that as, oh, they don't like me, especially if your child is a pleaser. There are some people that have a tendency to want to please other people. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a tendency. They feel other people. They care about other people. They sacrifice for other people. These are good things, but they also can be hurt if they don't feel accepted by another person. And they can detach quickly if they feel like it's not safe because they can't please that other person. So you need to look at your own behavior. If you feel like your child is pulling away from you, you've got to examine what do I need? Do I need a new way to communicate? Do I need new skills? Because that's probably the number one reason that they might pull away from you. There are other reasons too. I'm not gonna go into as much depth there because I'd like to help you with this number one reason if possible. But there are other things, screens, technologies, distractions, too much friend time, all of those other things like that can also pull them away from you or start to disregard their attachment and their relationship with you as much. Now here's another one that might surprise you. Sometimes children stop thinking their parents love them if their parents don't stop them from doing bad things. There was a time where I was speaking to a group of adults and a woman confessed that she had done every single bad thing that she could think of just because she was hoping that her mom would tell her no, that her mom would care enough to stop her because she wasn't sure if her mom cared about her and loved her and her mom never did stop her. Isn't that sad? Our children want us to tell them, nope, there's a boundary there. That was not okay. We need to correct it. They want us to do it, but they want us to do it in a way that shows that we truly do care and love them and that it's safe to be corrected. So how do we do that? Well, this is the Teaching Self-Government channel. If you have subscribed to this channel already, then you know everything on here is about learning the skills and the principles of self-government so that you can have a proper tone and structure in your communication, in your family, where they can feel the love, they can feel the calmness, the acceptance, the trust, the mercy, forgiveness. They can feel the open-mindedness, the understanding. Those are all tone elements. And then they can feel the structure too. So what is the structure? What should that look Look like? Well, the, the family plans what type of family they want to be, and then they plan out their communication, and they prepare to communicate with each other using certain skills that everyone understands. Skills like following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. They learn self-regulation skills and what to do when a person's starting to go out of control, how to correct someone in a way where no one has to take anything personally, but it's all just safe how to set goals together, how to play together and have fun together, but not ruin the productive times too. Those are all things that you can learn through the skills and principles of self-government. In this video, I'd like to start you off with one skill. It's actually one step to one skill. The four basic skills of self-government all start with the same step, and that is to look at the person. When your child is talking to you, stop, pause, look at the person, actually listen to what they are saying to you. And then if you want to take it a step further, repeat back what they told you. Don't just immediately tell them that's wrong or that's right, or you didn't think of this, or you did that not good enough. Don't go there. Listen, look, listen, appreciate, repeat back to them so that they know and then give them advice. There's actually something I teach in my TSG parenting course called parent counseling sessions. When you do a parent counseling session, there's 14 steps 
of a process that you go through with your child to help them take ownership over their own behaviors, their communications, their relationships, but also to bond and connect with you and, to sh and for you to show them how you understand them too as you're solving problems together. This process is very helpful to learn. There are so many other skills and principles of self-government that we could talk about and that I can teach you, but maybe you'd like to have a little bit of a preview of what those skills are. So there is a video on this channel, it's a full length class called The Not So Known Secret for Parenting Success. If you click on the link to that video now, you'll learn about some of the nuts and bolts of the tone elements and structural elements of self-government that you can use in your family so that your children get corrected with love and so that you can start forming a relationship with love. They want their heart to be turned toward you. In fact, we need it. Click on the link to the not so known secret for parenting success now.